Thank you. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Hopefully, all of you can hear me. Um, my name is Medha Bandari, and I'm from Auckland, New Zealand. Um, I'm 13 years old, and today I'll be sharing my journey in the data world with you. Um, I run a YouTube channel called NZ Tech Girl, and I post kids coding videos and Excel videos. And I'll be explaining more on that later on through my presentation. Um, you can follow me on my Instagram. And if you want to contact me, then my email is midhabandari at gmail.com. So how it all started. Um, when I was nine years old in 2016, my mom, Indira Bandari, she is now an MVP. Um, started running a game development, um, she started running game development classes and the course was six weeks long and we used the app Construct2 to create our games. In June that year, uh, we signed up for JHack NZ who were conducting a game development competition for high school students in the Manukau Institute of Technology. Um, as the competition was for high school students at first, we didn't think that we were able to submit our games, but later JHack encouraged us um, to submit the primary school students' games too. So we ended up submitting eight individual game along eight individual games along with one group game. Um, and the competition was on 25th September, 2016. So out of um, all the games that others had submitted to, um, five games were selected um, from the individual and the group categories. The chosen kids had to present their game in front of everyone. And they also got judged according to their explaining. Surprisingly, me and my friend from the same course were two of the five people that were selected to present, and both of us ended up winning the second and third place. Um, I'd like to show you the game that I had created for the competition. So just give me a sec. Can everyone see this? Yep, we sure can. Okay, okay. so um, the game's called Season Run. Um, the drawings are really crappy because I was a weird um, eight-year-old thinking I was quirky. But um, so this game is based on the four different seasons we have in a year. And the levels go from summer, which is the easiest, to autumn, which is the hardest. and I don't even think I've passed autumn. So if you want to challenge, then go for it. Um, I have made a tutorial page, which used to have sound like audio in the background, but it just stopped working. But basically the tutorial just tells you the aim of the game and what challenges you need to pass. Um, and so I'll show you a glimpse of level one. So summer. So when you um, jump onto the different um, logs, it gives you different logos. And so the aim is to get all the coins. And over here at the top, I've done a scoring system. But because it's like repeated over and over again, the same um, logos are coming, the score just stops. Um, so I've completed it. And it used to have audio in the background, but now it's obviously not working. And so click on the home button. And the next one is winter. So the one thing that I've done wrong, well, I've done so many things wrong, but um, the one thing that's really um, annoying is that when I click the pause button, or we'll have a break, have a Kit Kat, um, there's no home button. So you can't go home and um, unless you finish off the level. So I have to finish off the level. 
and the same thing. The aim of this whole game is just to collect the coins and um, jump through the last flower thing. <laughs> so go home and spring is um, a, li a little bit less hard than autumn in my opinion but you might basically if you want to challenge then you want to try you so want to try um, level three and level four which is spring and autumn so now to go back home you have to refresh the whole browser but so once this loads um, a good autumn and as you can see autumn is really hard and I, I think I've gotten through this like once after so many thousand tries but yeah and as you can see at the top the score increases every time I get a coin let's try it okay yeah yeah so finally finally the sound is working but we don't need it anymore So back to this, um, what I've learned through making Season Run is, this is all on Construct 2, um, it's a really good place to make games and through that I've learned about events, triggers, um, action and how to make, the char make characters, um, how to make the characters move, how to insert music and inserting audio and how to draw um, the point scoring system that I showed um, in the demo and button actions and adding images. So continuing a next step further. Um, after the game development competition, I had a year break and got back into technology in July, on July 10th, 2018 when my mom started another course, but this time it was 12 weeks long. This course taught Power BI and SQL Server. So we learned um, what databases were and how to create them and how to insert the data into tables and query the data. We were also taught about select statements and update and delete data statements. Um, we were tested um, at the end of six weeks, which was halfway through the 12 weeks. Um, so the first half we were learning SQL and the second half we were going to be learning Power BI. So six weeks of SQL and six weeks of Power BI. And um, once the, six, the 12 weeks were over, um, a competition was conducted to make sure that listening and learning stuff. Um, and we were told to make a visualization from any data from makeovermonday.com. So go check that out. Um, there are a range of data sets on there. Um, and we were judged by the well-known MVPs, Layla and Reza. Um, and my report was on movies around the world database, which showed the actors of different countries and the movies they were in. So I didn't end up winning this, but I had taken a lot away from this presentation on what I needed to work on. So I'll be showing you the visualization that I created for this competition. So this is how it looks like. Uh, so welcome to Air MB. Uh, today we'll be traveling um, the United States of America, France, Spain, and India. And those are the top four languages in movies. 
So let's get straight into it. Uh, here are the safe safety rules. So we all know that. Um, and then underneath the life jacket, there's a button. So I've used the bookmarks to create the buttons. And so we finally reached the the states. And so we click on another bookmark, which leads us to the theater. So over here, obviously, um, in America, you speak English. Well, mostly you speak English. And so uh, it's the most, the most English movies are in the USA and then it comes to the UK. I have a very tiny data, data set because um, I was like really small then and I didn't know how data actually worked and this was my first ever presentation and Power BI that I've ever created. So I decided to go with a small amount of data. So over here it has the number of movies the number of actors and the number of side actors. So if we go next, we're going to France next. So we click another bookmark. Bonjour, we're in France. <laughs> and so another bookmark. Um, so in France, obviously you speak French. And the number of movies are 73, the number of actors, 61 side actors 70 as i said before i had the tiniest data set just because i was just beginning and so over here i've used the play axis custom visual to um show each year as each year goes by um the different movies obviously as i said i had a really small data set so it would just be like ones, twos, and threes. Oh, and sixes. <laughs> so we'll go next. And next we're gonna go to Spain. So in Spain, um, people speak Spanish. And so obviously Spain is gonna be the place where most of the people are gonna speak Spanish. And um, the second one, is the United States of America. So over here again, the same things, the number of movies, number of actors, and number of side actors. And so if you click on an actor, then it will tell you um, the amount of movies they've done. Again, really small data set. Last one is India. So you click the button and Namaste. So we click the button and over here, Hindi is mostly the language spoken in India. So <clears throat> it's mostly in India and then a little bit in the USA. Again, the same things. And so, yeah, that was what I presented at the competition. And um, at the end, I had some really constructive feedback because uh, it was my first time and I, I really needed the feedback. So what happened next? Straight after that competition, um, with just a few months break, I started another databases and data visualization class in 2019. Um, this time we took part in Microsoft's back to school competition um, for Power BI visualizations. And we submitted four visualizations in groups. So after that, I participated in a competition for the kids of the class locally. And again, the judges were Leila and Reza. And I won one of the three prizes for my visualization on teaching history, which I'll be showing now.
So in this visualization, I decided to analyze the data about the historical events that have changed the way we live today. Um, I got this data from onthestay.com, which I'll be showing you after the presentation, after this demo. Um, I have created this like an app because usually history lessons are very boring. So I thought that maybe creating something unique would help children get interested in learning about the world's history. Uh, this app um, is named Past a Historical Timeline, as you can see. And to the right over here, I have the different icons to explore. So if you hover over the first one, the one that looks like a text box, it says Q&A. So if we click on it, um, this one is just used if you want to um, do something really quick and if you just want to like search up something, but I'm pretty sure like everyone knows James Cook, so I'll just search up. Oh. Um. Okay, now let's try. James here. Yeah. So, James Cook's expedition lands on the east coast of Australia. So the it will tell you the country that was that the event took place in, the date of the event, um, what the event was, and the year of the event, which is really cool if, obviously, if you want something really quick, then you can just search it up on there. And the next button is the features and sources button. So over here, um, it just shows the visuals that I've used and the DAX measures and the, the website that I've got my data from, which I'll be showing you soon. The third icon is the country events, which shows, um, so over here it shows the different events that have happened in and over here it shows the years so it's placed where it, like whichever year it happened in and over here this is in Albania so but if you want a different country you can just go maybe I want Argentina so I click on it and it will change the way it looks so I used a timeline storyteller to make this, that's what the visual is called. And over here, um, if you click on this, then it will completely change the way it looks. It will change the layout of the graph. And if you hover over, it tells you the event name and the total number of events are shown on this card over here. So this in this is the information tab. So over here it just shows why this app is created, like what the aim of this app is and everything to do with the buttons around. Um and this one is the globe icon. If you click on it, it's a world map. So according to each yellow dot, so if the yellow dot is really small, it um, represents a smaller number of events. But if the, um, dot, the yellow dot is really big, like in Canada over here, um, it will be a bigger dot and up here I don't know if you can see it very well but um, uh, the event year so if you just click on here it will zoom in to the um, 
event that was mo most popular during that year. And if you go here and it takes you to Egypt. Um, so the arrow that points right is the top 10 events. Now this is really useful if you want to know like the top events. And so it's clicked on Netherlands and you can even click on Guatemala or any of the other um, countries we have over here. Um, so as you can see, Guatemala is in a different color and the Netherlands are in, are in a different color. And so if you don't want one of them, you can obviously just take them off and then you have one left. So obviously in Guatemala in 2012, the most events happened. And in Afghanistan in 2012, again, the most events happened. So if we go home, now, it also says that you can click on the time man to get started. So when we click on the time man, it takes us to look at all the different events around the world. And as you can see, the map is just um, all together and um, they're all like bunched up. So that means like there have been a lot of historical events. Um, and over here again, I've used the play axis button, the visual. And over here is a card visual. So um, when I click the play axis button, it will take you round into the different parts of the world where historical events have happened. And over here, it will tell you the, um, what the event was. And yeah, the number of events isn't working. But over here, it tells you the date of the event that has happened. So you can look at that. So if I go home, so that comes to the end of this demo and I have learned to create so many new and different things while making this Power BI and if you'd like to have an, um, another look at this visualization then it will be in my PowerPoint. So presenting, uh, I started properly presenting at the end of last year. Um, my first presentation was at Microsoft's monthly Power BI meetups. And because it was my first time, I was obviously really nervous um, because I, I hadn't even practiced before I presented there and it was really nerve wracking. But um, when I finished, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Um, all my words just randomly came out of my mouth. <laughs> and um, that presentation really helped me build my confidence and speaking aloud. Um, it helped my communication as I am not a person that is too good at public speaking. And it even taught me not to repeat my words as it might get the audience annoyed. Um, I also advise to practice at least a bit beforehand and not like me. Um, because practice is really good. Um, if you don't practice, you might stammer. And well, that's not a very good thing. And finally, just be you and make sure you smile and try your best to make your presentation interesting. So my next steps were to start perfecting my skills and 
then I could be able to help others by passing my knowledge. So then I decided to make a YouTube channel, which decided to make a YouTube channel, which is called NZ Tech Girl. So please subscribe to that. Um, I had the idea of making the channel for a long time, but then lockdown came on time. Well, it's not a good thing, but um, it just made me have nothing to do. And so I finally made a start on it. Um, I started off by making simple Excel tutorials for beginners. And recently I have started coding series for kids um, using the website code.org, which teaches kids to learn coding in a super fun way. Um, I personally learned so much um, more and code.org uses um, characters and like stories to help you um, code. Uh, through lockdown, I attended my first ever hackathon um, run by Hack the Crisis NZ and it was a virtual hackathon due to COVID-19. Um, I joined a team called Draw This and met a lovely group of people who were very welcoming. Um, the idea of Draw This was to connect the younger and older generation through art and drawing. And how it worked was Draw This would call up an elderly person, for example, from a rest home and ask them what they would like drawn. And the elderly would describe an object or thing like suppose a cat, a dog, a pencil, whatever they want drawn. Um, and the call would be recorded with their permission, obviously, and the recording would be sent to a primary school or a child um, who, or just a kid who would want to draw it. And um, then they would draw it and send it via email or post. Um, in this way, we were able to make connections between the two generations. Um, and our idea made it to the end and we finally won, um, which was really exciting because it was my first hackathon and we won, so it was quite a big deal. Um, we got the first prize and the hackathon, in the hackathon, which was $5,000. And I would like to show you our, our website. So this is Draw This. If you scroll down, connecting the young and old through storytelling and art. So I'm going to go to draw something and it's listen, draw, upload and make people happy. So if you're really into making people happy, um, you can draw it. <laughs> so choose something to draw. Um, I will go for Kristen's Barney the cat. So if we click on it, So that was Kristen describing her cat, Barney, and that call was obviously recorded. 
Um, so if you scroll down, these are all the cats um, that um, primary school kids or just little kids have drawn and they have been sent to Kristen um, and via email or post and make um, her cat must be very happy. <laughs> so the next step from here is just to click on next. And so if you want to upload your own drawing, then you can just take a photo of it and drop it into here. And you can write your name and email. It's optional because we didn't want to take too much information um, for safety reasons and privacy reasons. So it's optional and you can just type write in your name just so that we know who it's from. So my second hackathon. Um, my second hackathon was also also another virtual one, and it was run by Microsoft. It was the Hack for Good. Um, the hackathon was eight hours long, and our ideas were all combined together to make um, the name Sponsor Me. So the, the aim of Sponsor Me was to find donations for the people who had lost their job due to COVID-19. I built a chat bot with Power Virtual Agent, Agents and if, an FAQ bot using Power Query for our website. And that was, I had learned so much from this hackathon. We didn't win, but it was such a good experience because I got to make actual things and it was just really great. So I'd like to show you the chat bot that I had made. So here, yeah, hopefully you guys can see this. Um, this is Power Virtual Agents. Um, over here, uh, my bot is called Registration, is the Registration Bot, so I've named it Registration. And if you scroll down, you've got Learn More, and there are videos that you can look at. And there are different topics. So just let it load. Um, so if you want a simple topic, if you're a complete beginner, then um, lesson one would be great for you. And analytics. Yeah, this is for your own um, bots. And so if you've finished your bot and you want to publish it somewhere, like I needed to publish it onto my website, so I've used this button. So if you want to publish your bot anywhere, then you can just click on the publish button. So back to home, um, I'm going to go into customize your greeting because that's where my bot is. So here is my bot. So to start with, I've used triggers um, like good morning, good afternoon, greetings that we say every day. Um, so um, the trigger phrases are for what the bot thinks the person speaking is going to say. And so the bot will say, hello. And the question that it's going to ask is, would you like to register? Um, and the options, I've used multiple choice options. But there are other ones like date and time and duration, and you can even type in your email. But for this one, I it's a yes or no question, so I have used multiple choice. Uh, and so if you click on yes, then it will take you to, the bot will ask you another question, which is which of the following are applicable to you? So. 
um, you'll either say I am willing to sponsor or I need help. So the person who is willing to donate the money will click on I'm willing to sponsor and the person who is in need of the money will obviously click I need help. So if you click on I'm willing to sponsor, then the bot will say here's the link for registration and it will give you the link for the registration and it will ask you is there anything else I can help you with um, and if you say I need help then it it's the same for both so it will ask you a registration link because both of you need to register for both of them so now I will test up um, test out my bot to see if it is actually working so over here we have the chat box where you can test it out so I'll say Hi, agent. It takes a little while to reply back, but it does reply. Okay. So, yay, it's working. So, would you like to register? And I'll say yes. Again, take some time. Okay. Which of the following are applicable to you? I will say I am willing to sponsor, and it will give you the link. So, this is actually working and that's really great uh, so power virtual agents is really good if you want to make like bots and for your website or just anywhere or you can even just use it for fun it's really fun to work with and you can just have a play around So, in my conclusion, um, to finish off, uh, I'd like to restate the things that I wish I'd done differently. So, looking back at my game, my first game, Season Run, I think I should have added a home button in each level so that you didn't have to keep refreshing the page over and over again um, just to get to the home. Um, and also in my first Power BI, um, I think I should have thought more on analysis and finding out and finding the most and least in the data instead of focusing on the visual appearance because I was more focused on making it look pretty and um, I didn't end up having much data in it um, in the first place and um, I just didn't, I wasn't able to analyze it properly. Um, and if I had to describe my data journey in a sentence, um, it would be that my age has never come in the way to learning new technology and facing challenges. So honestly, just, just go for it. Um, and lastly, I would like to give some advice to anyone wanting to start their journey in the world of technology or in the data world, um, is that Age is just a number and you can start this journey at any age you want and don't think about what others will think of you and just be you. And if you are unable to understand something, um, make sure you reach out to somebody that can help you like a mentor or even a friend that knows what you're talking about. Um, because if you keep um, the confusion the doubts in your mind then um, you won't really learn anything <laughs> so keep learning things and so I just wanted to say thank you to Ben and Gabby for giving me this wonderful opportunity and a big thanks to Will um, for being my mentor you are really big help um, I didn't know what to write in my conclusion and you gave me like so many points and it was just really great and I really thank you for that. Uh, so if you guys again subscribe to my YouTube channel um, if you have any questions or you want to contact me 
I have my email and you can follow my Instagram if you want. Um, thank you guys so much for attending and yeah. Thank you for everything. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much for uh, presenting Meta. That was an awesome, awesome session. Um, what was one of the hardest things that you had to get your head around in Power BI and how did you get around that? Like, did you go and talk to people or, or what did you do? What was the hardest thing about Power BI and how did you get around it? Um, well, the hardest thing for me was um, analyzing the data because I had never worked with um, data before. And then like suddenly my mom's just like, you're joining these classes. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so, but like, if I needed any help because my mom was in, um, into Power BI, like I could always just ask her 